Uislamu inakula the western world. And if things don't change, if Christians don't stand up, Islam it ameza the entire Europe. These are warning to Christians in the western world. If you slumber, then Islam will take over the entire Europe. Now all the mayors, all the ministers, all those big cities, zimekaliwa na waislam. So Muslims have taken over. Like now in France. Like now in the UK. Muslims. Viketiviote viongozi. They are Muslims. Governance. Muslims. And they are really targeting America. But God has his hopes in America. That Christianity in America is affecting even the Europe, European world. And that's why Donald Trump, God has wired him. God has fashioned him. Like the way God fashioned Cyprus in Isaiah 45. To do what? To reign. He, in fact, Bible says, and God anointed Cyrus. He calls him my anointed servant for the purpose of rebuilding the temple of Jerusalem. So Trump has an agenda. That agenda is divine. It is godly. And what is happening in America is what shall happen in Kenya. Hallelujah. That the anointing Yemga Maker Julia Donald Trump is the same anointing God will replicate in the, in the life of the midwife president by at a rural Kenya. And we are still praying, and that's why Kenya we are praying, and I thank God that our prayers are being heard of God, and we are seeing results in our motherland. So, Donald Trump wins, and the win for America is a win for the nation Kenya. Because anointing, that anointing, is also being done and what? Being duplicated, being replicated, is being also imparted on Kenyan land. And you shall have a president who is a midwife president. Now there's an agenda that God has for Donald Trump in America and by Jamaliza. And God will finish it. And that's why Trump will finish uh, his remaining term. He goes back to office, I mean, he remains in the office to finish. I said about uh, Tanzania, and it has happened. The same will happen to Uganda. And uh, Kenya will be the last. And uh, we will be the least. So maybe God is serving the best for us, Kenya. Although our matters in Kenya are very heavy. One Now the midwife president were, uh, were Kenya, I told you. And I think some of you, kama umefuata vile ni mawambia, umesoma. I gave you a leakage kwamba. Isaiah chapter number 3 and verse number 3 and 4. In fact, the entire chapter 3 carries a bulk of revelations about the president who comes over. The president that they may not want. The president that you may not, that God does not really want for us. I say that Kenya is like has two presidents in the, I mean, in the spiritual realm. One, I'm about to capata if our judgment is not overturned. But as things are, God is overturning judgment over our nation. Now, the president that we will we'll have in the event our judgment is not overturned is a child. Those who are students of the Bible, check in the Greek and the Hebrew, verse number, uh, number four of Isaiah. And then you also check uh, the other verses. Verse number four mentions the word child as Naar. Or Naar. Naar. Naar is N A. Another A R. Naar. That's a Aramaic word for a child, meaning a wanderer. Translate that one for yourself in Kiswahili. And I didn't write the Bible. There's a student of the Bible. The word 
child is rendered in Aramaic or Hebrew as Naar. That's a primitive root word, Naar, meaning a wanderer. So, that's a child for a president, a wanderer. The other meaning of the word Naar is a sense of tossing about. A sense of being tossed about, tossing about tossing about it also means it connotes a young one someone a young one a young one the word babes or babes as used in that context is a word in, in Hebrew or Aramaic it means talul ta hyphen a L Y W L. You can pronounce it in Hebrew, in Hebrew as Taalul. It means a tyrant. Means a baby. One who is divided inside of him is divided. Those words also rendered as alal or awlal. Alal, if you come from the lecture, the word alal means one that is lost. In a, it is in a, a bad sense to overdo. So, I mean, a leader who will overdo things to maltreat, who will do maltreatment, who will cause you pain, who will bring you in position? Who will abuse the privilege of being a leader? Who will actually affect and affect you with oppression? He'll be synonymous with the defiling, to glean or to mock. One that will practice, thoroughly work wonderfully. Or thrusting oneself, he'll thrust himself. So those who are students of the Greek and the Hebrew, go search and read Isaiah 3. In fact, read the whole chapter. Because also it mentions about women. And that brings me to the second prophecy about the curse of the two-third gender rule. If the judgment in Kenya is not overturned, and it's only God who will overturn, based on our continuous perpetual prayer, women shall sit on you. I have nothing against women. But the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 3 and that should be verse number look something about women. This thing we are clamoring for hmm, uh, the gender rule, the gender rule, the gender rule. What is the mind of God about the two-third gender rule? Verse number 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Repetition of verse number 4. Children are their oppressors. And the women rule over them. And the women rule over them. If the judgment is not overturned, Women shall rule over the children of God. Now the word ruling over them here is does not, it does not really mean that it is bad for women to take positions. But the word rule, check it out. Oh my people, God is, God is like a tone of sorrow. They which lead thee are causing thee to error. And to destroy the way of thy paths. It's willing to get some mad. Now, what one? What auto? What a fanyika nan? What's oppression in Swahili? To be oppressed in Swahili is what? Let me hear you. Can I hear you if you are sure of what you are saying? To be oppressed, 
kugandamizwa uh-huh. Can I hear uh, Mama Felicia? Tuambie lugha ya pwani. Kiswahili inasemaje to be oppressed? Ni dhuluma. Bwana asiwe. Dhuluma, haleluya. So there are words that connotes oppression ama hali zile za kufinyiliwa. And women shall rule over them. So na wanawake watafanya kufanya nini? kuwatawala Sasa hukumu hiyo ya taifa la Kenya isipopinduliwa then sio tu Kenya kuongozwa na watu ambao ni watoto bali pia wanawake watawatawala I know that uh, there are people who may really want to poke hole, punch holes on this prophecy but remember that I am sent So if you have a problem seek the one that has sent me wanawake atawatawala alafu ba marika sema mm, oh watu wangu wanaowaongoza ama wafanya kupotoka wanaowaongoza that means viongozi ambao wanaowaongoza ndio wanawasababisha kupotoka kupotoka ni kukosa kupotea njia and destroy the way of the past na pia kuharibu mm mapito yenu ama njia zenu wanaharibu and god is warning and cautioning us kenyans that in the event we our prayers don't qualify in the event we don't pray as god may want then judgment will not be overturned and if judgment is not overturned tutakuwa na viongozi ambao kwanza utaongozwa na watoto na kuongezea zaidi mtapatiwa wanawake kuwatawala remember those of us who have studied history about the agikuyu they suffered oppression when they had a, 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 a woman oppressing men those who read history about the agikuyu so now women regardless of their tribes ndo watawatawala Kenya na sio cha tena mwapatia is a judgment because Kenya tumekuwa watu wagumu sana na tunapenda mchezo na tumemzoea Mungu we are used to God Kenya pray and so the this pursuit of the two third gender rule the clamor that we have in the nation that clamor in the nation is misplaced let women just go for the positions like men after all women are already in positions in the society but the clamor here this clamor this clamor is going side by side with we electing a child for a president so one side ni mtoto na watawala the other side of the coin ni wanawake kuwatawala will end up as an uh, will become will end up being a nation like the western world where morals and societal decay shall become the norm of the day today look at the west hmm? the rot in the society things that are you no know, we are looking at moral decadence in the west because women are ruling over them wanawake kiwatawala society taribika the devil I mean the devil anakuwa na freelance kutawala We respect women they are our mothers we respect women but they are our helpers it is not in god's will that women washukia nafasi ya wanaume you cannot change the order the family order the family order is that man is head and the, the woman the wife is a helper that's biblical 
Ah, the Bible, the, the Bible, no place, verse number 12 of us, a mistake. In fact, it's placed here. It's a judgment. And this is the judgment that Kenya may face. So, the two-third gender rule, we are praying for the masses of God that it shall not prevail. And that's why it will never prevail in parliament. It will never go through. It has not gone through. And, uh, we, and, uh, and uh, we prayed and we are praying that God will have mercy on us so that we do not have this, the curse of the two-third gender rule. Then, the fate of Kenya's parliament. You remember in one of my, uh, in the, my prophecies that I have released before, and I, I mentioned what God revealed to me about the constitutional crisis that is coming to Kenya. And all of us saw what almost shook the nation. The constitutional crisis when the, when the president of the courts, the president of the judiciary, mentioned about, I mean, gave a verdict that the parliament should be closed. That in short means dissolving parliament. In short means you dissolve government. And that was a constitutional crisis that was facing Kenya. But we stood in prayer. It should not happen. Because should it have happened, then the midwife, the prophetic move of midwife the affairs of this nation will have failed. And that brings me to the third prophecy. And the fate of the BBI initiative, Building Bridges Initiative. Building Bridges Initiative is gold, is God ordained, it will pass. I said so last year, sometime when it began, I say the hand of God is over BBI. And those of us who don't know, servants of God over Kenya prayed, intercessors prayed, and reconciliation was birthed. So BBI is a, is a vehicle that is meant for reconciling Kenyans. It was birthed then. We serve a God who is called Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom means the Prince of Peace. BBI is a process that midwifed peace. It was not born of Satan. It was born of God. I mean, look there, it looks it looks uh, a political vehicle, but God is behind it. And God has not given me another different word concerning BBI. So BBI will sell through, and this is the vehicle that will be used to midwife the agenda for Kenya between now until the next 10 to 15 years. As the Lord so told me, I said it last year, I repeat it now. So those fighting BBI, well, it is blindness, it is not knowing, it is myopic, and uh, well, contest it, but that's a vehicle mkono wa mungu kukatika alihiwe BBI. So the fate of BBI is that BBI will sail through victorious in the name of Jesus. Kenyan parliament will not be closed until we are done uh, with its full term. And the two-third gender rule will not succeed. Uh, they can continue these other avenues of just opening doors for women to try and break through. But giving rulership and mandate to women uh, so that they champion the cause to, I mean, alongside men is not biblical. Then the last prophecy is about Uhuru confirming the prophecy about his deputy. I remember I released a prophecy about when God, I told you how God spoke to me and God told me, there is one that is busy working hard closing his doors of presidents. And I felt grieved because I know who he is. He's working hard closing his doors. So God told me, look, my servant, this one, is busy closing his doors. Then who confirms it? 
And this is why you must hear a king when a king speaks. Just like Balaam, the donkey spoke. So God can put words in the mouth of a king. He can speak oracles of God without knowing. And President Uhuru spoke an oracle. All the wise men in Kenya read it. All the prophets in Kenya read it. It was not a joke. It was a very heavy word spiritually. That his deputy is busy running backwards. The speech about the president had some prophetic connotations in them. And so those who want to know the will of God, the will of God is revealed. As many as are gorillas so are here. As many as are doubters wait for the fulfillment. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. Translate the word the wanderer in Swahili. Then you'll arrive at the meaning and you see it also with another wing of the politicians. So guess where God is and guess where God is not. And the warning goes to politicians who are lying. I mean to prophets who are lying to politicians. Politicians who are lying. And this is how elections will be. Presidency leaves the mountain, goes down to the lake. It will leave the lake. It will go down to the plains. Once it has finished the plains, it will go back to the valley. There the wise interpret. And so shall that be in Jesus' name. And so shall that be in Jesus' name. Amen. Let as many as uh, have heard, let's pray that God will grant the performance of his word. Hallelujah. And um, AIC, PCA, and CITAM. There are ministries that God will want to use in the revival, that includes CITAM, AIC, PCA. And God will do shake them, shake them so that they align to God's agenda for revival. And the shaking is going on. And God will also uh, return judgment on some ministries and uh, those ones that uh, I mentioned, Repentance and Holiness Movement, JTM, NENO, and uh, and the likes. And already some of those prophecies are being fulfilled. And we are seeing the emergence of prophetic voices that will be helpful in guiding the nation on how the nation should go about so let's keep praying for the shaking of God so that the church, they'll be rising back of church denominations that God will use. Hallelujah. That shall be in Jesus' name.